didn't play at Rugby Park last weekend, but uh, a top talent for Celtic and goal. Kenny Clark, referees hearts against Celtic for the third time this season. And the last time, he flashed the yellow card ten times. This time the beach balls on the pitch are being supplied by the Hearts supporters after Celtic's UEFA Cup exit at the hands of uh, Villarreal. So this is becoming a regular occurrence now on the football pitches of Scotland. Clearing the beach balls off the pitch before we can get underway. And the beach balls at the moment playing a 5-3-2 formation <laughs> by the looks of it. Uh, what do you reckon, Sandy? Well, you know, Kenny Clark's obviously not going to start the game, but I don't see anyone making any kind of effort to get, go and clear those balls up. Even the players around about you know, just kick them off to the side and let's go on with it. Is things. that just the one up, do you think, with one <laughs> play slightly off? The pitch clearing operation well underway. I thought that was you there, the taste of her coming on. <laughs> 34 points between Hearts and Celtic last season, 35 already this season with five games left. Hearts haven't won in April, three draws and a defeat. Celtic this month with two wins out of six. But then the two wins have taken them to, firstly, the Tenant Scottish Cup final with their sweeping aside of Livingston, the semis. And then, of course, last Sunday at Rugby Park. A rather important win, that one, because it removed any mathematical doubts whatsoever that Celtic would be champions. It's now a question of how big is the winning margin? It's 15 at the moment after Rangers draw, which you've seen at Tannadice yesterday. So it could be 18 if Celtic win, and they could be homing in on that record-winning margin of 21 points, which was notched up by Dick Advocat's Rangers in 1999. It's a free kick there in Hart's favour. Tackled by Henrik Larsson on uh, Stephen Presley. Uh, I'm looking at the Celtic lineup early on, Rob. They look as if they're going to play three at the back, five across the middle. Barga, Valde and Yalbe at the back. Jamie Smith's going to the left-hand side to play left wing back with Didier Gat on the right-hand side. So those beach balls were in the right position there. <laughs> you got it spot on. A bit interesting as well today. I'm just looking at the Ten Castle pitch. It's not in the best of conditions. There's a lot of bare patches. It's very uh, dry as well today, so it'll be difficult for the players at times. I'm sure it'll be bobbly. There you go. Looks, looks like the back of your head. <laughs> looks like the top of yours. <laughs> <laughs> was Andy Webster's header. On Maybury, the Republic of Ireland international. Back from Varga. David Marshall clears. There's Scott Severin at full stretch. Came on as a sub last weekend against Livingston. And he's played a full under-21 game during the week. He's a good player, Scott Severin. Very competitive. Had a bad season due to, to injury. Hasn't played many games at all. I'm sure he'll get stuck in today, he want to try and impress people today. Vargas throw, Larson flicks it on for Petrov. The only goal scorer at Rugby Park last Sunday. Good challenge from Maybury on Agat. Didi Agat certainly felt it, but that's the way Alan Maybury plays, and he's had a good season, and he's back in the Republic of Ireland squads for the midweek game against Poland. So he's making a big impression. He's also playing the left-hand side, which is unusual as a right-sided player, but he's, he certainly bombs on down that side. But he's giving away a free kick here. I'm sure the big guys have built from the back, yep. Mialvi and Valdi and Varga all forward for Petrov's free kick, but he fails to get it beyond Paul Hartley. Neil Lennon will be unaffected completely by the jeering from the stands. He's well used to it. Liam Miller, under pressure from Phil Stamp. 
Jamie Smith's pass. Foul by Robbie Nielsen. A little bit over eager. I'm sure Rob, as this game develops today, has to work really hard to close Celtic down. Both are playing the same systems, 3-5-2, so it's man for man, a lot of battles all over the field. The Craig Levine's teams, they certainly work hard to, to close down, to press hard and not let the, the, their opponents play. Don't let, try not to let them settle. That's a good cutout from Webster. Hartley mixing it in midfield as well, but the Celtic have it with Lennon. Larson's flick. Liam Miller couldn't quite make the most of it. Good challenge from Andy Kirk. Foul by Mabry on Miller. He's unlucky, Alan Mabry. Don't think he's deliberate, but he certainly catches uh, Liam Miller. Neil Lennon with the free kick. Patrick is Norbo clears. Aidan McGetty. Jamie Smith. Overrun it, Smith. Loses possession to Kisnorbo. Oh dear. I don't know what Patrick Kisnorbo was thinking about there, but I tell you, Andy Kirk had been a marvellous run in between Bobo Valde and Stanislav Varga. Patrick Kisnorbo could have found him, but he'd been through the keeper. I think he was trying to play it with the outside of his foot, but he got it all wrong. And a quick counter attack possibility for Hearts was lost. Stylian Petrov. And uh, poor delivery from uh, Didier Agat. I think Rob uh, will give Agat before that Patrick because Norbo the benefit of the doubt. I think the, the pitch, the way the pitch is today, that will cause that kind of bad passing. I think you've got to try and take a touch, make sure the ball stopped dead, and then try and pass it. Wednesday night, only an eighth league defeat as Celtic manager in four years for Martin O'Neill. Good challenge from Varga, it was a brave one. Phil Stamp forcing his way down the right-hand side. Corner kick. Good play for Phil Stamp. I tell you, Robert, I think it'll be a feature in this game today. Kevin McKenna is up against Varga, Mialbe and Bobo Baldi. And I think McKenna won his fair share of headers in the box. We've seen it earlier from that long kick. And Andy Kirk will be looking to go on the end of them. Andy Webster up. Rory Nielsen as well. And it's a poor one in from Paul Hartley. And I feel the pitch may well be blamed for that as well. Good run from Alan Mabry. Mabry's cross. It was behind McKenna, and it was easily fielded by Liam Miller. That was a chance though for Hearts. Celtic breaking it. They thought they were going on a counter attack there by Henrik Larson. Unlike him, gave the ball away. That's good play from Liam Miller. Very composed, quick enough as well. Johan Mialbe, Stylian Petrov. Threads it through, no takers. Goalless after seven minutes at Tyne Castle. And certainly good to hear from Chris Robinson that uh, pre match that uh, Hearts are very likely to be staying here for another year. Of course, big question marks about what happens beyond that, but it seems very much as if it's going to be another year at Tyne Castle. Hearts. It's just a great venue for football matches, and, uh, and you'll hear from uh, Chris Robinson during the half time interval. of the back three with Varga to his right and Yaldi to his left. Jimmy Smith with the nutmeg of Robbie Nielsen. A good covering from Andy Webster. Good play from Andy Webster. And that's what he's there for. The system hearts are playing. If uh, you see here, if Smith goes beyond Robbie Nielsen, you expect Webster to come out from that area, that central area, and cover him and make that type of challenge. Newcastle are ahead against Chelsea in the English Premiership, and if Chelsea don't win, then Arsenal can clinch the title by winning their game this afternoon. That one's later on, but it's 2-1 Newcastle, Alan Shearer. A 
title already settled in Scotland. Celtic are champions for the third time in four seasons. But Hearts encouraged by a two-all draw at Celtic Park three weeks ago. Vargas shot, hit with plenty of power, but in the way was Hartley. Here he is again. Looking to start something for Hearts, but not like that. A casual pass which hands possession back to the champions. Gats pass, the idea was decent, but he just gave it too much pace. There's too much weight in this pass from Didier Gatt. Henry Larson's trying to make the run, he can't go too early, otherwise he's offside. But just got to take, uh, take the weight off it from a Gatt. Neil Lennon up to Henrik Larsson. Great challenge from Scott Seven. And a good challenge by Liam Miller to deprive Andy Kirk of possession. Scott Severin, Kevin McKenna, good turn. That was good bold attention from McKenna in the end. The hoop shirts were swarming around to pick up the pieces. Kevin good... McKenna's touch will have to be good because he's got a tough shift against a big back three. He has, but it was interesting listening to, to Jim Duffy before the, pro the game started. Jim thinks his best position is centre half. I have to think that uh, centre forward is where he really does his job exceptionally well. So aggressive in the air, creates chances for people round about him. And anyway, Jim, anybody can play centre half. <laughs> Watch what you say now, Jim, in the studio. Careful. Ten minutes gone, Hearts nil, Celtic nil. It's been a good tempo to the game, Rob, in the, the first ten minutes, but the, the pass has been poor because of the conditions. But I'm sure the players will adapt to that the longer the game goes. That was McKenna's header. Stan Varga did enough to make sure that Andy Kirk wasn't going to get on the end of it. Andy Kirk five times capped by Northern Ireland. But uh, he struggled to hold down a regular place for Hearts this season. Dennis Wyness has been given a lot of chances. <laughs> Celtics 56th game of the season. And after this one, another five left, four league games. And the uh, Tenant Scottish Cup final against Dunfermline. Strong challenge by Severin on Baghetti. And uh, check a problem for Robbie Nielsen. Yeah, he's got a very bad cut above his eye. The blood's pouring out of it, Rob. Uh, the, doc the team doctor's just been called, the Hats doctor's just been called down from the stand. I'm sure he'll be called off very shortly. Henry Larson's crossfield pass. Aidan McGeady, the youngster. Lovely turn and free kick. Good skill from him. That's the first real glimpse of what he can do. Yeah, it's good. Good play from the youngster. This is a good ball from Henrik Larson. McGeady's first touch is decent. He can go towards goals, forced back the way, but it's good touch. It's good football. Doesn't panic. Don't give the ball away. Nice little turn and maybe just catching his, his trailing foot. And you know, Sandy, that all stemmed from a very lazy yep. pass in midfield from Patrick Kisnorbo. That opened up things for Celtic. And it's presented them with a set piece. Kenny Clark having a look at the damage to Nielsen. Tries to wipe it away with his sleeve. He might need something a little bit more permanent, I think, in the way of medical care. So let's get it. Petrov's free kick aimed at Varga, headed behind by Webster. Good defender from Hearts at the set piece. Celtic, as we know, are so dangerous, so many big targets. But Hearts are a big, strong team as well. And we have to make sure there's no chance of a goal there. It's got to be disciplined, it's got to be organised from Hearts because the threat from Celtic comes from uh, one of five, as many as five players. Petrov slipped. <laughs> Spectacularly cleared by Stamp. First class delivery. Okay. And a Hearts free kick. I think that's an indication there as well of the way the Hearts play. That long clear from Stamp. As soon as the ball was played forward, Hearts are pushing up right away, putting Celtic under pressure, not allowing them to, to get the ball down at the back and, and start another build up. 
In his first half, closed down very quickly by Liam Miller. Presley launches it, Mialbi with a poor header, straight to Kevin McKenna. Well, maybe he should have hit it first time because he was off balance as he tried this effort on goal. It's a poor header from Johan Mialbi, but uh, Kevin McKenna, he's got to take a touch here because of the conditions, but then he gets too much time. He can't make his mind know what to do. And by that time, really, the shot would have been blocked anyway. But his alternatives there, he could have passed it away to Robbie Nielsen, who would have been the better header to make a delivery into the box. That's a Celtic free kick. Another chance for the big guys to go up. Baldi, Varga, both making their way towards the Hatch penalty box. In from Lennon. Again, it's away by Stamp. Back to McGarry. Now Smith. Liam Miller linking the play together. in the last lap of his Celtic career. He's heading for Old Trafford in the summer, having signed, of course, a pre-contract agreement with Manchester United. Another loose one from Mialbi. It's Norbo to Kirk. Stamp. Lovely pass with the outside of the right foot to Robbie Nielsen. His throw, and he can fling him. If he wants to rub it here, so I'll get this one right into the penalty spot. It's from McKenna. There's Andy Kirk at the chance. And very casually back heeled behind by Didier Gatt. Great chance for Haas. Again, the threat from McKenna in the air. This is a great header. He knows exactly where Kirk is. That's a really good challenge on Kirk. Otherwise, this one surely would have ended up in the back of the net. The great header from Ken McKenna. Bobo Baldi and it makes the challenge. Uh, <laughs> the rugby ball <laughs> thrown by the Celtic supporters, that's in response to the beach balls. Must be the fashion. Hartley's corner, back from Stamp. And then the second ball, and it was a big disappointment for Paul Hartley. That's Presley. McKenna. Too much on it for Kirk. But there are promising signs up front for Hearts. Well, it's, uh, we said earlier about uh, Kevin McKenna. Every time there's a ball played up to his area, it makes a good challenge. Celtic are in a little bit of pressure. And if Hearts could pick up the, the loose balls round about the edge of the box, they should have one or two half chances. Valdez header, good turn from Lennon. McGetty's layoff to Agat. Aidan McGetty again. A trip by Mayberry. That's a silly one because that allows Celtic again to get a heavy artillery forward. I don't imagine Craig Levine too impressed, Chick. No, he's not at all impressed by the number of uh, free kicks uh, that would be given away and also the possession. He tried to get them to get a hold of the ball, keep it and string a few passes together despite the chances they have created, Rob, but they're giving that ball away far too cheaply in his point of view. A delay in the taking of the free kick. Well, Kenny Clark gets things organised in the area. In from Cillian Petrov, Stan Varga had a chance. It's Aidan McGarry, the 18-year-old, his first top-team start, his first top-team goal. It's Celtic's 100th Premier League goal of the season. What a day for him. It's a great finish from the youngster. It's another set piece, Hearts have given away far too many free kicks, but Varg has got a chance here, but he misses the ball completely. But McGeady, he's on his own, but there's still a lot of work to do. He makes a really good connection with the shot, he gets on target, it's slow and hard, Craig Gordon won't see it to the last minute, and then straight in that corner, it gets a little bit of luck, the fact that it hits the post and then goes into the net. Often you see him coming back out of the way, but the technique is excellent. It's a great effort, great power on the shot. Well, check a big smile on the face of Martin O'Neill there, and uh, I think he's been promising the youngster, hasn't he, that he would get in, he would get his chance as soon as the title was won. Yeah, I mean, there's been talk in the Celtic ranks. He's been travelling with the squad all season. Martin O'Neill has brought him, brought young Magedi in. He's just turned 18. He's been travelling the squad over the last few weeks, Robin. When the, when the team's been announced, he's looked really disappointed that he's not been included in the starting eleven. He's got a lot of confidence in his own ability. Smash a young lad. 
born in Glasgow, but unfortunately we seem to have lost him to the Republic of Ireland as an international player, despite the fact he is uh, born in Glasgow and, he, and his, his folks are uh, Scottish as well. That's a foul. Heavy challenge by Stamp on Smith. Late challenge for Phil Stamp. I'm actually just looking with young Eddie McGeady's uh, playing today. He's playing in that midfield area, but he's got a, a license to play anywhere he wants in the, the three man mid Celtic midfield, getting forward up beside the strikers at times. He showed there he can take a chance when he gets one. A massive talent and veil that top team level this Sunday afternoon. He's scored goals for the under 18s this season 12 times, a couple for the under 21s, and now he scored for the first team, Aidan McGeady. What's a moment for him. 1-0 Celtic in the 20th minute at Tynecastle. Celtic have certainly started the game fairly well. They've passed the ball well, they look dangerous going forward, and especially at set pieces. And that's the thing that will annoy Craig Levine more than anything else. The fact that it was a needless free kick. And that allows Celtic to take the lead. Paul Hartley, good shooting chance, but he was leaning back, it was always heading over the bar. He had to take this one quick, Paul Hartley, he's going to be closed down by Bobo Baldi. It's a decent effort, the ball just bouncing up a little bit as he hits it. Then the momentum takes it right over the bar. I've seen Paul Hartley score from that distance, that type of shot, hits the ball well. his header, heads out. Well, we said at the time it was a silly free kick given away by Alan Maybury down at the corner flag, no real need for it. It allowed Celtic to put the, the likes of Varga and Baldi up, and that was, of course, where the chance stemmed from and uh, finished off by Eden McGeady. And it also wasn't uh, Maybury's first one, Robin. I think it's been maybe three or four in that area. The Celtic have had uh, a chance to deliver the ball into the box. But if you get, keep giving Celtic opportunities, eventually they'll take one. Albies pass, and we're getting offside. Well, he will be rerunning the video or the DVD recording of this a few times, I would imagine. His first top team goal for Celtic just three weeks after his 18th birthday. His first glimpse of the top team 1 0 Celtic. Of course, a Celtic win would uh, open up the gap at the top of the table to 18 points. And you just wonder what will be the winning margin by the end of the season, the gap between Celtic and Rangers, which has looked this season massive. Yeah, that's the way the season's panned out. Uh, the Rangers, obviously, champions last year, lost a lot of players this summer, but Celtic this year, you've got to give them an enormous credit. That man, Matt O'Neill. Even though they're so far in front, you can still see the, the, the way these players are working for him. He certainly seems to get the best out of them game after game. Craig Gordon's free kick. Aldi attacked it, but it runs through for Kirk McKenna's shot. Spilled by David Marshall and got there at the second attempt just in time. I think it's a pitch again. It's another half chance for Hearts, but McKenna, for me, he's maybe going to take a touch there, but you see the. <laughs> The fiery bounce right in front, in front of David Marshall. The young goalkeeper, he's very quick off his mark. It's a challenge here. Bobo Baldi in full stamp. Look a painful one. Well, that just shows Hearts, Sandy, that they've got to get more and more efforts in on goal because if the surface is uneven, and, and certainly it seems to be there are some uh, fairly eccentric bounces coming up off the, the playing surface. You want to be getting lots of shots in and getting players in for the rebounds as well. Yeah, well, we've seen Hearts having two, four, five maybe efforts to go so far in this game, but all off target. But this one, it's on target, that's important. And you can see the bounce here, I think it's actually right on the six-yard line. The young David Marshall showed what uh, good qualities he's had. He has great reactions to, to make sure he collects the second one. It was good play as well from Stan Varga because he was uh, very quickly in on top of his goalkeeper to protect him and to make sure that Andy Kirk didn't get first to that rebound. Well, you see that as a, as a football coach, Rob. As soon as the, the shot goes on target, whether you're defending or attacking, you follow it in. If you're a defender, you've got to get there first. If you're an attacker, you've got a chance of scoring a goal if it comes off the keeper. He's had a season 
that he will never forget. David Marshall, having come on as a sub at half time at home to Barcelona. And uh, he's done a little wrong since. He's still very young as a goalkeeper, though, Rob, but uh, the potential's there. I'm sure Barry Fox is very aware of Marshall and young Craig Gordon at the opposite end of this field. That's when you think that David Marshall is two years younger than uh, Craig yep. Gordon. You realise that uh, he's got a lot of learning to do, but already he's packed away a lot of important first-team experience. He's also learning very quick. That was Miyabi. Picked away by Smith. Webster's challenge on Larson is penalised. That's good play from Henry Larson. Right end beside Andy Webster there. Forced him to give away the free kick. But a wasted thing, free yeah. kick it was. Yes, yeah, unusual Celtic waste in a set, a set piece. Good leap from McKenna to win the header. I wonder, Rob, how many times 50 50 challenges that Kev McKenna has won a header today. I can't remember him losing one. And he's playing against three very, very big defenders. Nielsen's throw. McKenna was again the target. Vargas header. Jimmy Smith trying to keep possession, but Hearts have it back. And Phil Stamp, as you can see there, is hobbling around the midfield check. Yeah, he's coming off. They're going to bring on... Uh, I think it's going to be Hamill who's coming on, Rob, to, to replace him. They'll just... A little sh shuffle there for Hearts, but Stamp can't continue. Yeah, it'll be Hamill who's replaced him. Well, that's a blow for Hearts. Phil Stamp missed last weekend with a, a calf injury back in from the start here today but uh, the game is not going to last long for him 25 minutes gone and Phil Stamp is heading off One's hearts are ready to make the change if it is Joe Hamill that, that comes on for Stamp I wonder if it'll be a change of tactics as well from Craig Levine could well go to a 4-4-2 with that change Melby's free kick Larson leaping for the header, but it skimmed off Presley on its way back to Gordon. Big kick out from the keeper. Baldi first there. And goes Hartley against Lennon. It's Joe Hamill who will replace Phil Stamp. 20-year-old Hamill on, and this will necessitate a reshuffle. Hamill's first touch finds Alan Mabry, and there was a push in the penalty box, and a free kick given against Mabry. Kenny Clark blows his whistle before this shot uh, from Mabry. It's taking place just here. You watch it here, just a little nudge. Maybe in the back of the day, I got good spot from Kenny Clark. You see it better from this angle. See both his hands going on the got just putting the defender off. Kevin McKenna tries to play in Andy Kirk, not quite. Under pressure was Mialbe. Good touch on the ball, Stan Varga. Didier Guts plays it in hope and loses possession. Check what's, what's Craig Levine wanting from Joe Hamill. Well, it's just a, a, I'll just come back to you after this attack, Rob. It's Andy Kirk who's won a corner. Carry on. Thanks permission to speak. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, they've just had a little tactical reshuffle. The, f <laughs> the three fingers get held up all the time from the, from the manager, so the figure three involved. There's a little switch all over the place. I think it's quite a, a complicated arrangement going on here, Rob. We'll get back to you when it's sorted. Because actually we're in the middle of a protest behind the dugout now, aimed at Chris Robinson, of course. We'll get that in a minute. Joe Hamill's corner helped on its way behind. Well, placards being held aloft, maybe it's as well, we don't focus in on them too closely. The mention of uh, George Fouke's surname, I think, features. And um, all about Hart's future here at Tynecastle. Another corner from 
Hamill, which doesn't make an awful lot of progress for Hearts. Still, and Petrov still grounded down near the goal line. That was two chances there for Joe Hamill to put the Celtic defence under pressure from the corner kick. In both the cases, poor delivery. Chick, it's not been a great week for TV pundits, so maybe it's best that you don't read out what's on those posters. No, 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 I want to keep my career with the Gordes BBC intact, in but they're aimed at Chris Robinson. We will be speaking to Chris at half-time about the future of Hearts, as I understand it. They are going to stay here for another year, but only another year, then move to Murrayfield. It's cool or not, there's George Fulks, the chairman of Hearts now, and he announced just a couple of weeks ago, actually, at the Motherwell game, for the first time that uh, Hearts would indeed not be going to Murrayfield immediately, but it's only for a year, a stay of execution, as I understand it. But we'll hear it from Chris Robinson's mouth at half-time, Rob. Yep, still a lot of uncertainty about the future of Hearts beyond the end of next season. Free kick for Hearts. You have Mayal, but just a little nudge there in Kevin McKenna. But a chance this time for Hearts to get the ball into the Celtic box. Paul Hartley looks as if he's going to take this one. Andy Webster steps forward, Scott Severin as well, Patrick Kisnoabo all into the area alongside Kirk and McKenna. Paul Hartley's delivery, a free header for Kisnoabo. Unable to hurt Celtic, but Hart's still on the ball. Maybury with Liam Miller right in his back. Here's Joe Hamill. Good pass to Kuznorbo. What a chance he had there. And he's lost the plot again, Patrick Kuznorbo, with a poor pass. I watched Hearts play here last Saturday as well, Rob, against Livingston. Kuznorbo was exactly the same. As you see, the ball was poor. He's a first-class defender, works really hard for the team to close people down, but he's got to work at his, his use of the ball. He was well picked out, Kuznorbo, by that uh, Paul Hartley free kick for once. For the first time in the match, really, it was a good delivery from Hartley. Found Kuznorbo, and uh, well, they just couldn't direct the header, and there were options for him. Petrov tries to play in Magedi. Good bit of rescue work there from Kuznorbo. Credit to him this time. That's what he's good at, Rob. Great defender. Very competitive between Hearts and Celtic, it always is. And only the teenager McGeddy's golden goal separates these two. Onside, Andy Kirk, can he square the game? He certainly should, he's missed twice. I can't believe that, and neither can Andy Kirk. This is a great ball from Patrick Kisnorbo. We've just given him a hard time, but what a marvellous pass. And Kirk is on side when the ball's played. There's everything right, great first touch, but he really can't make his mind up just there. And he gets the second opportunity off the goalkeeper. It's a gaping goal, you've got to get on target. You've got to put the defenders under pressure. Probably catches it too well, but well over the bar. What an opportunity. Well, he may have had a good first touch, Andy Kirk. His second one was appalling. It let in David Marshall to block the first effort, but the second one was an open goal. And he's still scratching his head, Kirk, and wondering how he could possibly have missed a magnificent opportunity for the Tyne Castle team to square the game. Meantime, a little bit of a set two between Petrov and Severin. Chick, did you see what happened? Yeah, I did, Rob. It was a very clumsy challenge by Andy Webster, who's uh, been spoken to by the referee. But uh, in the wake of that, there was a clash between Severin and Petrov. There's Petrov about to be spoken to by the ref. Uh, they squared up to one another. It was uh, all about verbal more than anything else, a bit cheap pushing and shoving, nothing too serious. But it was the original clumsy challenge by Webster that caused the problem. A sunny Sunday afternoon at Tyne Castle. Hearts nil, Celtic one. <laughs> Henrik Larsson with the free kick. Didier Gatt. And an easy take for Craig Gordon. If you pop them up with that much altitude, the goalkeeper's going to grab them. It's an easy one for the keeper. It's a poor delivery from Didier Gatt. Yeah, 
If you've just joined us, Celtic's goal here is their hundredth of the Scottish Premier League campaign. And looking to open up uh, an 18 point gap at the top of the table. The title sealed last Sunday. Well, that was clumsy more than anything else from, from Scott Severin. He protests his innocence, but the free kick was given. I don't think he tries, but I think it's uh, Scott Severin's momentum more than anything else. It takes him into Stan Pedro. He kind of clapped right toward the free kick there. And always the suspicion that follows Stylian Petrov around Scotland that he embellishes these challenge and challenges and makes the most of them. Liam Miller. Jamie Smith. Henrik Larsson's flick. Alan Mabry got just enough on it to divert it clear of Maggetti. Gats to Lennon. Good work from Hearts. Miller, Maggetti, Petrov. Aidan Maggetti again. Scored once and he fancies another one. Great player from the youngster. And also a good passing move from Celtic. Petrov involved. It's a great little pass to McGarry. Decent first touch. Cross his body. Only one thing in his mind. I'm going to have a goal. He's got the confidence from the first goal. Okay, God, making a good save. A late challenge on Paul Hartley. Kevin McKenna reckon Kenny Clark should have played that on. He thought the Hearts might have had a chance of scoring here beyond the foul challenge. Yeah, the referee blows his foot was maybe just a fraction too early. No doubt about the free kick. But he just wondered here if Hearts could have played on. There's another free kick actually just near the box. The ball's, the the ball's at Kevin McKenna's feet. He's still got a lot to do there, Rob. There's still a lot of work to be done if he's going to get an opportunity there. He's back to goal. Jarmi Albe is right beside him. Let's not argue then, it's only, only five games <laughs> left. <laughs> Young David Marshall trying to organise as well. I think that Andy Kip missed it. I think you've also got to give Marshall credit. Closed them down really well. Paul Hartley over the ball, Joe Hamill over the ball. Scott Severin just behind. Four inside the area for Hearts. Hartley's pass. Robbie Nielsen shot, blocked by Jimmy Smith. Hamill all the way back for Presley. And Baldy will let that go, and there'll be nothing that Andy Webster can do about it apart from trip the Celtic yeah. defender. I can't, I can't believe Paul Hammond didn't hit a shot there from the edge of the box. What an opportunity. Well, it's party time at Celtic Park. Next Sunday, we'll be there to see it. The championship trophy will be handed over to Martin O'Neill's team. We're on air from 10 to 3 and will obviously take in all the celebrations afterwards as well. Celtic champions again. Three out of four for Martin O'Neill and foiled by just a single goal last season when Rangers, of course, swept the boards. Scott Severin, good work in midfield, releases Paul Hartley. Joe Hamill. Wanted too long on the ball, and Liam Miller robbed him. That's not at all what Craig Levine wants from his young substitute. No, it's not. Uh, I'm just looking at what Hamill's playing as well, Rob. It's, a, it's just a straight swap. Hamill's playing the position that Stamper's playing, so no change in tactics from Craig Levine. Well, the dummy might have been clever from Scott Severin, but no one benefited from Hearts. Celtic on the ball. McGeady, the goal scorer. Good challenge to win it from several. Now three against three for Hearts. Hartley with the decision to make. Now McKenna. And Petrov intercepts. Ken McKenna didn't want to go on his left foot, didn't want to go down the line. Went on to, on to his stronger right. Possession retained by Neil Lennon. He's a past master at that. Given away by Miller. Kirk against Balde, and then only one winner there. Good defender from Bobo Balde. 
Here's a reminder of the man of the match. Telephone number 09011-110861. Signed man of the match top, Bank of Scotland family match day. Handheld TV, those are the prizes. And Sandy will make his ruling later on. And I wonder if the youngster Eden McGeddy might just crown his day by getting man of the match as well. Long way to go, but uh, he's certainly been a delight to watch so far. And I have to confess to feeling a little bit depressed that uh, he's uh, thrown in his lot with Ireland instead of Scotland. Well, it's, he's maybe not made his mind up for certain. You know, as he, as he grew... I yeah, I know, I know that he's said that, uh, you know, he's, he's committed to the Republic of Ireland, but until he plays an official game for 21s, unless he's already done that... I think, I think he has, Sandy. Yeah. I think he's played a game for the 21s. I know you were clutching at straws there, yeah, but... I'm trying, uh, I'm trying. But he does look a highly promising talent. You're always wary of talking up players too much uh, when he's just turned 18, but uh, when you hear Tommy Burns eulogising, as he did pre-match, about uh, his ability to play then uh, you have to listen and you have to be aware that McGeddy uh, could be quite a player to watch in the future. Here's Robbie Nielsen. It's a second bite. It's Liam Miller's pass. Andy Webster will let it go. Just. Nearly 40 minutes gone at Tyne Castle. Hearts nil, Celtic one. It's tough to play badly no. Sunday, but uh, the scoreline is against Craig Levine's team as uh, as Andy Kirk, just below him, gets his boot sorted. I think he had his boot ripped or the, the lace was burst of his on his boot, so he's getting that sorted. And uh, there might be some doubts in the Hearts technical area that he's wearing the right boots, having missed that sitter a short time ago. It's been good, though, Rob. I've enjoyed the first half. Craig Levine will be, he'll be disappointed. That they're a goal down, especially the, the way they lost the goal from a set piece, unnecessary free kick. And I'm sure uh, the, the players that Craig's got in the field today, they'll certainly be committed second half, they'll push people forward in the hope of getting that equaliser. Do you think those two should have consulted about what style of baseball cup they were going to wear <laughs> this afternoon? They're clashing horribly over there. Can Hearts carve out an equaliser? Paul Hartley's free kick. Valde put his head on it as David Marshall was coming for the cross. Well, Bobo Valde does the right thing here. If he's not sure, David Marshall obviously not shouting enough or loud enough. But if you're not sure as a defender, don't take any chances. Clear your lines, and then reorganise. Five in the box for Hearts. Hartley's corner, unmarked was Andy Webster. And Andy Kirk had another chance. It's a real chance again from a set piece. The, the, the marking in the back from Celtic at set pieces is poor. And watch the number of maroon jerseys that could challenge this one. It's a free header from Webster. And Andy Kirk, you've got to see there, is really unlucky. Any kind of contact at all. And this is going to end up in the back of the net. But young David Marshall, right place again to make the save. Just didn't quite get enough contact, Kirk that would have taken that beyond Marshall because David Marshall didn't see an awful lot of it but he managed just to grab it on the goal line but uh, a shocking lack of marking from Celtic at the set piece Andy Webster must have uh, been disbelieving as he saw how much room he was given there I think Rob, when you look at the first half chances the, the better ones have certainly fallen to hearts they just haven't managed to stick them away Craig Gordon really nothing to do apart from pick the ball at the back of the net once so two minutes to be added, five minutes then, just about away from the half-time whistle. Hearts are pushing and pressing, but they need a goal. That was a strange throw from Alan Avery to Stephen Preslander, all sorts of pressure. Liam Miller shrugs off Scott Severin. Still in Petrov. It's it back from Didier Gat. Hardly time challenge by Paul Hartley. And that just allows Celtic to again throw the ball into the penalty yeah. box. Yes, uh, he's late at Paul Hartley. Petrov, Petrov reads the challenge coming, makes sure he gets over the top of Hartley's leg, no danger of getting hurt. But so late in the first half, Celtic uh, leaving Mialbi and Baldi and Varga exactly where they are.
Celtic content to be ahead and maybe surprised still to be ahead as well given the chance that Kirk missed that was Webster's header Severin's there well won by Neil Lennon though doing his usual sterling work at the heart of the midfield for Celtic Henrik Larsson lovely pass for Jamie Smith and couldn't do much with it real quality about the way Jamie Smith was played in here by Henrik Larsson yes yeah, a great pass Smith he, he does well to stay onside the ball in behind the fullback and I think it's a pitch again that that uh, makes the first touch look poor Jamie Smith just can't get this one down at all she maybe play it first time across the goal and see what happens but you see it bobbling up there and makes life, life difficult for the youngster I'm just looking at Hearts as well, Rob. They've changed their tactics a little bit. Scott Severn's going to play in the midfield area, leaving Hearts to play a back four. That's Andy Webster. Nielsen, Webster, Presley, Maybury at the moment with Scott Severn just in front, Sandy. I think, that's right, Rob, I think it's Aidan McGeady that's caused the problem. Celtic, he's playing right up beside Petrov and Larson, so Celtic really are three front players. Forcing Hearts into a back four. Just 15 seconds left of 45 minutes, two to be added. Because Norbo's pass for the overlapping Maybury. Does well against Varga. And no nope. goal kick given, no free kick against Didi Agat. It was a great run from Maybury. It looked to me like a free kick. Yeah, the, the ball from Kisnor Ball looked a 50 50 challenge, but you see there, Kenny Clark getting absolutely spot on. Did he again? Doesn't make any contact. In fact, that, should, that should have been a yellow card well, for that, diving, no? Maybe he certainly got to hurdle him and go over him, Rob, and then to me. It's the <laughs> dying swan, dying isn't it? Swan there, isn't it? Maybe just a little bit lucky to get away with that one, Alan Maybury. The Hearts captain, Stephen Presley. Maybury to Webster, flicked on to Severin. Joe Hamill, Kevin McKenna, good move from Hearts. And all that was missing was a better final ball into the area. Yeah, it was good play from Hearts, good build up from the midfield area. A great defence from Stan Varga just at the end there, yeah, just enough to block Andy Kip, not allowing the forward anywhere near the goal. That's Webster. Flicked on by Hartley, given straight back to him by Bobo Baldi. A push by Miller and Hartley, but Kenny Clark plays advantage. And I think that's the ball Joe Hamill was wanting. Andy Kirk, Scott Severin, Jamie Smith for Celtic. Because Norbo, Maybury, last chance of the first half for Hearts to try to fashion an equaliser. Lost though by Kisnorbo. McGeady. Weaving his way clear of Maybury. Half time. Out time Castle. It's a football fairy tale. It's an awful long uh, time in footballing terms, and I'm not convinced that Murrayfield is, a, is the answer. Billy, many thanks for that. We're going to rejoin Sandy Clark and Rob McLean. They aren't used to losing, and uh, so many records to protect. But lose they did, having, of course, been close to losing against Hearts three weeks ago in Glasgow, 2 0 down with three minutes left before Celtic salvaged a draw. And Hearts equally competitive here against the champions. Craig Levine will be pleased with the performance, pleased with the pressure, pleased with the creation of chances in front of goal. And if Andy Kirk had had his shooting boots on in the first half, it could have been 1-1, it could even have been 2-1 Hearts. You're right, Rob, uh, the Hearts haven't done too much wrong first half. I'm looking at the line-up at the start of the second half, I stick with that, uh, the back four that they finished with. And Joe Hamill's playing right-hand side, Patrick Isnorbo drifting towards the left in the midfield. 
Scott Seven, he'll sit in front of the back four and Paul Hartley will try to be a supporting midfield player. Jimmy Smith's pass. Smith playing the left wing back position with Didier Gatt on the other side. And the back three of Varga, Baldi and Mialbi with Neil Lennon patrolling the area just in front of them. To the usual great effect. Warning, beach ball on the pitch, just the one this time. Mialbi loses possession. Kevin McKenna played it off Baldi. Well won by Paul Hartley. And a disappointing delivery for him. He was trying to pick out Andy Kirk at the back post. He managed to do the hard bit there, Paul Hartley. Won the 50-50 challenge, then a poor delivery into the box. The right away start in the second half. You can see Hearts are trying to press the game as far up the park as possible. Again, trying to close Celtic down. Lennon flicks it on for Smith. Back goes Joe Hamill, the first half substitute. And Celtic have a corner inside 90 seconds of the second half. I'm sure we'll see the big guys up again. Yep, they're all making their way up. Mialbe, Baldi, Varga. Three big targets inside that box. Hearts want to stay in touch. They don't want to go too down. Petrov, Lennon, offside, Solian Petrov. It took a long time for the assistant to put the flag up there. My initial thought was to look at the assistant, but Neil Lennon hits this one, and just when the ball's played, it's very, very tight. I think Petrov just half a yard at the most offside. Well, we've dealt with the Tynecastle question and the Murrayfield question. What about the Aidan McGeady question? Check, can we summarise by saying... Uh, he wants to play for Ireland, although he could play for Scotland. That's it, Rob. Uh, I'm going to go and mastermind, and my specialist subject is going to become Aidan McGeady because he seems to have spent the last 48 hours on television radio discussing him. The, the whole situation is that uh, the talented young man was taken over into the uh, Irish youth setup. He has played for Ireland, I think, under 19 or under 18 level in the youth team. He has not played in the under 21 side, which in any case would not eliminate him for playing for Scotland. So he's done nothing at this stage that would stop him playing for Scotland, except he wants to go and play with the Republic of Ireland. And I believe, although his parents are Scottish, he has a grandparent, I think, on his paternal side, who is Irish, and that allows him to play for the Republic. Andy Kirk, corner of Farga. So, so, ch so Chick, do we basically need to send Bertie round? Is that the answer? Well, I'm going to go down and see him at the end of the game. I'll take some Highland toffee and iron brew, <laughs> and I'll try and Scottify him by the end of this programme. I tell you seriously, though, I think now Betty Volks and Tommy Burns have got to work hard on that young man. Paul Hartley with the Hearts corner. Scott Shevron in some room. Back in from Nielsen, too far. Taken by David Marshall, but it was Scott Severn who had the chance, and again, the marking less yep. than perfect. I'm just going to say that, Rob, the set piece again, Celtic not too well organised. Perhaps again, feeling to take advantage. Jostling between Larson and Maybury, the Hearts player comes out on top. Celtic have a throw, played out by Presley. It was a poor pass from Stephen Presley. But when you're in there because of the pitch, the ball bounces so high, just clear your lines, just play it forward. Try and play in, the, in your opponent's half, rather than put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Given away by McGarry. And you would find something dodgy to say about him after a while. <laughs> Only taken the best part of an hour. Webster under pressure from Larson. Good work though from Andy Webster. Great play from the youngster. Stayed Henry. strong, didn't he? Yeah, he does. Uh, Henry Larson doesn't give you a second. He really doesn't have any. There's no way he should be anywhere near this one, Larson. But he doesn't give it up. Puts Webster under enormous pressure. But the youngster dealing with it really well. Hearts have to keep their belief. They've had a good first half. What they need is a goal. Severance pass. Kirk tried to play in McKenna. Celtic defended it well. 
Joe Hamill. Patrick Kisnovo, good challenge by Didier Gatz. That's great ball winning. He wanted too long, Patrick Kisnovo. Liam Miller shot with a pass for Petrov, and that allows Scott Severin to intercept. Scott Severin doing well, working back the way, protecting his back four. I think uh, the, the players deserve a lot of credit. There's 50 minutes of play so far. It's been a decent game under difficult conditions on the pitch. Because Norbo controlling the pass well to McKenna. Miller got in in front of Hartley. Severin to Maybury. Hartz just can't get that final ball quite right. He can't find that gap to get through the penetrating pass. Jamie Smith tucking in to do the defensive work for Celtic. Baldi this time. Flicked away by Petrov, good work from Severin. Hamill squares it from Mabry. Another good challenge from Agatz. Back with Marshall. Petrov's header. Scored the winner, the only goal last Sunday, which sparked title celebrations. Nielsen, McKenna with Melby right at his back. Foul against Melby. Kevin McKenna may be a bit fortunate, he's taking an awful long time to make yep. up his mind. He should have passed it earlier, but he got, got away with it. Melby just a little bit uh, rash with the challenge. In the box, McKenna. And Kuznovo and Severin and Kirk and Nielsen and Mabry. Played in by Hartley. Not great. Baldi unstretched. Not the best of deliveries here from Paul Hartley. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to get lots of pace on the ball, trying to flip it in. He couldn't get enough height. Nielsen's long throw. Baldi clears straight to Webster. Hamill, Kisnorbo. Lofted in by Andy Webster. Headed away by Stan Varga. Neil Lennon has an opportunity to start something. Henrik Larsson, brilliant touch. Not a bad pass either, was it, to Aidan Maggetti. Wonderful bit of skill from Maggetti. Might well have cut that back for Petrov or Larson, but uh, this little bit of skill which opened things up was uh, pretty impressive. This is brilliant. We'll be this for a touch on his left foot. And this little trick, brilliant, great to watch. He picks the wrong option there. Probably can't make his mind up whether to pull it back the way or have a shot. And ends up knocking it easily into Craig Gordon. <laughs> Magnificent ability, great confidence. Chick reckoned that was reminiscent of Rivellino. Chick, was he a, a player in the past somewhere? Do we, do we know him? Yeah, he chose not to play for Scotland <laughs> as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know it's, it's been, it pra practices that in his repertoire. I spent a day at Celtic with the, the, the Youth Academy and of the Youth Policy at the, at, uh, on Thursday. And McGarry was practicing, playing in a game. He was outstanding with the under-21 team. Incredible. And I saw him do tricks like that, Robert. Let me tell you as well, the Hearts are going to make a change. Patrick Kisnorbo is coming off. Not quite sure who's coming on. I think it could well be Marty Fries. And in England, Arsenal are heading for the Premiership title as Mark de Vries gets himself prepared. Patrick Vieira has scored at White Hart Lane, Tottenham nil, Arsenal won. And of course, with Chelsea having lost at Newcastle this afternoon, then a point is all Arsenal need to clinch the championship. Celtic supporters knew the title was theirs long ago, even though it was only mathematically certain last Sunday. It's been a runaway success for Martin O'Neill and his team. But just the 1 0 lead here at Tynecastle, and Hearts aim to do something about it. In goes McGeddy. Good positioning from Presley. Smith with Lennon alongside. That's a good pass from Neil Lennon. Petrov. McGetty. 
Lennon again makes himself available. That was heading for Larson before Presley's header. Varga, Miller, Good Agat. Spell. Good spell of pressure from Celtic. McGeady heavily involved again. Agat supported by Miller. Gets a second chance. Celtic attempting to pass Hearts off the pitch at the moment, and uh, now be barged off the pitch by Hartley's challenge. But uh, Hearts are going to make the change, and it's a change of the attacking variety with uh, Patrick Kisnobo heading off. And top scorer, Mark De Vries, will be his replacement. There's nothing else Hearts can do apart from go for it. Well, they've got to go for it. I'm interested just to see what uh, Craig Levine does tactics-wise now. Will De Vries play up beside McKenna and Kirk? Or will Ken McKenna play a wider area where he's played in the past? McKenna certainly drifting towards that uh, left-hand side in a moment. So now Hearts with McKenna and De Vries and Kirk. A front three by the looks of it. And immediately De Vries is the target, but Baldi wins the header. Nielsen to Hamill. The scorer of the only goal so far, Aidan McGeady. Too much on the pass, Presley intercepts. Jamie Smith, obstructed by Robbie Nielsen. Good play from Jamie Smith. He does that so well, Jamie Smith. That attacking down the flanks, right hand side or left hand side. He knows he's got the pace to go beyond Nielsen. Nielsen recognises that as well, so takes him out of the game. The only McGarry, he's playing the way in the left hand side now, Robin. He's seen plenty of the ball, and he's certainly making very good use of it. Petrov tugged the shot wide. Very much on target last Sunday, but not this time. And he scored three times against Hearts this season. Two in the cup win, 3 0 here. And he scored the winner in a 1 0 league win in January as well. I think uh, Martin O'Neill's thinking about changing his, his defensive formation after the substitution. Martin DeFuse coming on. Ken McKenna's trying to play on the shoulder of Didier Gatt, so I'm pretty certain if that happens, Hearts will be hitting long balls in down that left-hand side and hope McKenna can beat a Gatt in the air and create a chance in the box. Paul Hartley. Joe Hamill. Gets a free kick, given against Jamie Smith. Robbie Nielsen. Really give Andy Kirk an awful lot of chance with the pass. Webster knocks it into the stand. Pressure from young McGeady and uh, Hearts are well warned. Delicately poised here with less than an hour gone at Tynecastle. Celtic are ahead. Hearts have had chances, and now Hearts giving it plenty up front with De Vries and McKenna and Kirk. And uh, Craig Levine knows there are no prizes for losing 1 0 or 4 0. He's got to have a go. Yeah, and he's right, Craig. He's as well going for it now. Celtic will be forced to play a back four now. It'll be a Gat, Varga, Baldi, and Johan Mial will play left back, I'm sure. Stanley Petrov also dropping a bit deeper. Again, they played up front almost beside Henrik Larsson. Yeah, it's interesting how Celtic vary it, isn't it? Because yep. Petrov's dropped off a little bit. McGeady now up alongside Larsson as Celtic do their own little reshuffle. And certainly McGeady has proved very difficult to pick up, quite an elusive player. And he's shown already that he's deadly, given a chance. That was Andy Kirk's cross, blocked by Miller. It's a pure ball from Andy Kirk. A chance to get the ball into the box to face McKenna, both in there, big targets. And again, the delivery not right. Scott Severin's long throw. Varga head and shoulders above everyone. Andy Webster needed too long to get that down. 
Sliced out of play by Smith. the Celtic midfield as well, Liam Mullers on the right hand side, Lennon in the middle, Jamie Smith on the left hand side, and Petrov certainly dropped 10 yards deeper just off the front to try to help out. Quite interesting check in that technical area with uh, Craig Levine making his changes and then it's kind of 15 all isn't it as Martin O'Neill responds. That's exactly what happened Robin, Sandy's read it right, that's exactly what uh, Martin O'Neill was saying down here but he was having a problem getting the instructions across because of the noise level in the stadium you know and oh, I, I, amongst other I love Tyne Castle and the noise level in here is incredible a lot of atmosphere what was that? which makes it difficult for the coaches to get their instructions across and the Celtic players in the midfield were taking a while to get it to take the incoming information. 61 minutes gone. Hearts nil, Celtic one, Aidan McGeddy's first Celtic goal. But Hearts don't fancy being losers at Tyne Castle. Their only domestic defeats this season have been against Celtic twice and Rangers once. Mark de Vries was being held, it seemed, by Bobo Baldi as he tried to force his way through. Well worth another look. Yeah, Kenny Clark certainly moving play on, but just what you see here, I think they're both having a go at each other, Rob. Two big, big guys trying to, to fight for position to get to the ball first. And they're, they're very, very close to each other. Bobo Valdi doesn't too, do too much wrong there. You can see Matt DeFries as well using his arms. So I think they're at three right to play on. If that ends up in the back of the net, there would have been a lot of complaints from Hearts. Yep, I think when you saw that again, it was six and a half a dozen, a titanic tussle between those two. Evries versus Balde, no holds barred. Hearts look to ask some questions here. Andy Webster trots forward to join Evries and McKenna. In from Presley, missed by Evries. That's another wasted chance, perhaps. I think when you, when you look at the, the set-up and there's a high ball there, Bobo Baldi, Challenge say, the Mark De Vries there, invariably the ball will go in behind both of them. No one will make contact, and that's where Hearts needs someone coming round the back to try and take advantage. The only other attacking change that Hearts can make would be to bring on little Graham Weir. That would be another option for them, possibly to replace... Andy Kirk later on already. De Vries is on and Joe Hamill's on, so two out of three substitutions made by Craig Levine and his team of a free kick here. Pass of Selling going to try and make one of these set pieces count. It's going to be a good delivery. You've got to get someone attacking the ball and someone picking up the loose one. In from Joe Hamill and played in far too close to David Marshall to be any threat. It's a lower pace here delivery, doesn't it? It does, the goalkeeper, if you throw a high like that, lots of height on the ball, the goalkeeper's always going to come and collect it. That's well won by Scott Severin against Liam Miller, but he hasn't given it up, has he? The Manchester United bound midfielder. Foul De Vries <laughs> on Lennon, and a little flare-up as well between the two. I don't think Matt De Vries got many complaints there. There's a lot of few challenges going in now, Hearts are trying to lift the pace up. But Matt De Vries here can't argue with that decision. Maybe Neil Lennon's two on leg, trying to almost catch the big fella. But that's a late challenge. But just Rob, good back to what Chuck was saying earlier. The atmosphere inside Tank Castle today is incredible. It's a great arena, it's a great stage to play football. And after one of them, we'll certainly be delighted if Hatsa here, not just next year, but for longer than that. Presley headed that clear, unsure as to whether Craig Gordon was getting there, and I think uh, there was a shout from the goalkeeper, and Stephen Presley holds up the hand of acknowledgement. Squared by De Vries for Maybury. Scott Severin. The bouncing ball cleared by Stan Varga. Hearts still have it with Robbie Nielsen. Scott Severin. Alan 
me, but he's had uh, just beyond McKenna, and we're by Baldi. McGetty. Petrov. What Hearts don't want to do, of course, is push on so much that they leave holes at the back and leave themselves susceptible to being picked off by Celtic because a second goal for the champions, and you wouldn't put too much money on Hearts coming back. You're right, Rob, but uh, the substitution of Matt DeVries has certainly helped Hearts. They've played more in the Celtic half. After half time, Celtic with the ascendancy, but now Hearts are trying to, are certainly pulling themselves back into the game. I think they won a few kick there. But they've just got to create one or two more definite chances. Lots of balls in the box, but no real clear opportunities apart from the one for Andy Kirk. In from Severin to De Vries. Nyalby stands firm, McKenna shot blocked. Nielsen tripped, no. I thought, by McGinney. No free kick given. Celtic on the counter. Jamie Smith. And free kick is given this time against Andy Webster. That doesn't please the Hearts fans. No, that one is certainly a free kick. Webster doesn't get anything at all on the ball. Jamie Smith again committed going forward. You watch it here, he knocks the ball beyond him. And there's no contact from Andy Webster. So Kenny Clark right to award the free kick there. Yellow cards for Andy Webster. Craig Beatty is going to come on for Celtic shortly. Well, that free kick was given, this one wasn't. Um, well, I thought yep. it was I thought it was a foul. That was a free kick. Kenny Clark got that one wrong. Not deliberate, but it still takes uh, Nielsen out of the game. Hearts will feel sore if Celtic score. <laughs> McGeady is going to be the player who's coming off. Kenny Clark having words with Stephen Presley as the heart skipper looks to get the defence in a line and pushed further out. Petrov's delivery was a terrific one, and all it needed was a touch from Henrik Larsson, and it was 2-0. That's a great ball from Petrov. Just needs the slightest of touches, hard to defend against, the ball's in the back of the net, because all the way through, Larsson certainly stretching every inch to try and get there, just quite, can't quite get the touch. And that's what Hearts have lacked, is that sort of delivery from the set-piece, which almost set up Henrik Larsson with another goal. What a day he's had, 18-year-old Aidan McGeady with the only goal so far, makes way for Craig Beatty. There's another good young Celtic player on Craig Beatty, mainly Aidan McGeady. He won't forget his debut in a hurry, it's in a marvellous game. I love to see good young players coming through. Stephen Presley, Larson's challenge. Andy Kirk couldn't keep it. Celtic's throw. And you would imagine there might be one or two votes for uh, Aidan McGeady as one of them. Not wanting to lead you in any way, Sandy. <laughs> no, he's, in a, he's played almost 70 minutes of this game and said a, a massive influence on it. So he's certainly still in contention. <laughs> Liam Miller's throw taken from their own place. It goes Hart's way. The game's been good, Rob. Both sets of players are desperate to win this one. Celtic obviously want to get all three points, and Hearts at home, desperate to do well, to take something from it. Great effort from both sets of players. And of course, just the five points between Hearts and Dunfermline after the Pars 3-0 win against Motherwell yesterday. So, just the chance with these two still to meet, and Dunfermline could catch Hearts for third place. That's why they need points. Here's Craig Beatty. 
The substitute fires it in, it's off Presley and behind. Sorry, Sandy, you wanted to say I've just got to say, I didn't want to mention the Dunfermline one, but uh, certainly I'm not a chance if, if this game finishes 1-0 for Celtic, Dunfermline could well catch Haas, but this is good play from Craig Beattie. And Stephen Presley can't really do much more here. He's got to make sure the ball doesn't go any further. Stretching it all the way, but giving away another corner kick. In from Petrov, free header for Larson. It goes wide. Great judgment from Alan Newbury. Good set piece. Larson off the, the line towards the ball. A good little header. This needs a touch again. But Alan Newbury judges this to perfection. Recognises it's not going to go in. Another demonstration from a lot of the heart supporters inside the ground against Chris Robinson, against what the club are planning to do. You've had an explanation at half-time from uh, Chris Robinson about why exactly Hearts must eventually leave Tancastle, despite the fact they will be here for the next season. You can totally understand the frustration of the Hearts fans. Tancastle has been home for so long and they just don't want to leave. And well, Chris Robinson is saying that they have to leave. If there's, if there's different people in charge of this club, then you never know. There's different ways of financing things. And a lot of the Hearts uh, supporters that I know believe that can happen. I think he'll need the beard as well as the dark glasses if he's going to uh, escape recognition. Vargas free kick. Presley won the header against Beatty. Given away by Severin. Petrov finds room for the shot. Good recovery from Scott Severin. He blocked it. Now Hartley tried to get through the gap, and in the end there was no gap. Overrun, unlucky Jamie Smith. He's really unlucky. He's so sharp, so, so quick Jamie Smith. Avoided two challenges there, but the ball just going out of play. The Hearts and Fenlon game coming up is here, which I guess makes it advantage the Tynecastle team. But Hearts on 55 points at the moment. Then Fermlin after yesterday's win on 50, so it's closer than Craig Levine would like it, and he knows they need points before they will feel safe about third spot. Andy Kirk is penalised, there didn't seem an awful lot in that. News of a change from Hearts, Chick? Yeah, Graham Weir's going to be coming on, Robbie Nielsen going off. Craig Beatty slipped, he claimed he was pushed as he tried to receive the pass from a gat. That's a big booming kick out from Craig Gordon, watched all the way by Baldi. Johan Melby took a, a wee while there to make up his mind, eventually launches it in among the Hearts fans. So De Vries and Hamel on, shortly to be joined by Weir. Mark De Vries squares the game with 12 minutes left. Tremendous finish from Mark De Vries. It's the first time there's been a decent ball in the box. Johan Mialbi has a fresh air of this one, misses it completely. De Vries takes full advantage, very similar to the game he's going for Celtic, but catches it really well. Great power in the ball, tremendous pace on it, low, right in the corner, David Marshall, no attempt to save it, no chance of getting it. And you've got to say, since that man come on the field, the play hearts have been a changed team. They put Celtic under lots of pressure, and you, you can't deny on the equaliser. Mark De Vries' 13th goal of the season, scored against Celtic three weeks ago, De Vries. Hopes that might mean a Hearts win at Celtic Park. It ended as a two-all draw. He's done it again. And this time, 1-1 at Tynecastle. And we're in for a very exciting last quarter of an hour. It's been a great game. I think it's going to continue that way. Hearts will certainly have their tails up now. And the upshot of that, Mark De Vries goal, one of the upshots is that, Graham, we are not now coming on with Hearts back on level terms.
Mibri's free kick aimed at De Vries, played away by Petrov. Larson, Beatty. Larson again. In the end, settles for the throw. The pass from Beatty played him out much wider than he'd have liked. But just before that, Rob, the long ball, the clearance from, from Celtic. What a tremendous first touch from Henrik Larson. Hartley. Kirk. It reared up on him. That was out. Hart's throw. Good pressure from Kirk on Valde. Well, that's the way Hart's have been all day. They've, they've worked hard to try and stop Celtic playing from the back. They've had a fair amount of success from it. De Vries against Mialbi. That was a fresh air shot from the goal scorer. How important will this prove to be? I wonder. A magnificent goal scoring record he has for the Tank Castle team. And it's in off the same post as McGetty's first half goal. It's 1 1. Check, check the weir substitution was on, then it was off, now it's on again, apparently. Well, he's, he's coming on, Graham Weir, they've changed who's coming off. It's going to be, it was going to be Robbie Nielsen, it's going to be Andy Kirk, uh, and also the fourth official has just been told, wait a couple of minutes to see if there's going to be another change. They've informed the fourth official that this uh, switch is imminent, but that could be a couple of minutes yet. Good work from Joe Hamill, helped out by Mark De Vries, gets the break of the ball. Severin to Maybury. Challenge on Alan Mabry. And an angry reaction from Agats He's against the Hearts full back. He's not too happy. Alan Mabry just wants to go on with the game. He wants to try and get all three points. Hearts now sensing that they have the chance to go on and win the game, having got it back to all square. That's Miller to beat it. Good challenge by Presley. Back from Nielsen. That's Hamill. Andy Webster straight at Johan Melby. Severin. Lennon to Varga. 12 minutes left at Tank Castle, all square. Great run from Varga, but no free kick. No, I don't think it was a free kick, but it was a good run from the big defender. Trying to show his followers how to do it. This is great play, so determined, strong. Gets one or two little breaks the way through, great little touch there from Miller. And no way that was a free kick, it's a good challenge from Robin Nielsen. Much of a factor, Sandy, is that Celtic have won the title last Sunday, and uh, even subconsciously, there's a, a slight switching off. Well, I don't think that's where it's gone from. I think they've worked really hard today, and uh, you know, but I think you give Hearts lots of credit for, for working every bit as hard as determined to win the game. So, you know, certainly Matt O'Neill's maybe rested one or two players, uh, allowed to bring one or two of the youngsters in. Young McGarry certainly had a, an outstanding 70 minutes on the field. So, I don't think that's a factor at all. I think both sets of players have, you know, been determined to work hard and and try and get all three points. Certainly That's been a very impressive performance from the home team. Bags of desire, and that desire continues. Nielsen's throw, headed away by Liam Miller. Larson's there, so's Maybury. Smith's challenge on Nielsen, free kick. Another chance to get the ball in the box. Paul Hartley, I'm sure, will try to get lots of pace in this one again. The fifth meeting of Hearts and Celtic this season. 5 0, 1 0, 3 0 for Celtic, then 2 2, and now 1 1. Hartley's free kick, Mialbi's first there. 
inside the last 10 minutes. Aidan McGetty in the first half for Celtic. Mark de Vries, goal number 13 of the season. That was the equaliser. Severance header. Andy Kirk missed his shot. That's Hartley. Good work again from Paul Hartley. Very positive, very aggressive. But another great chance for Andy Kirk. He's had a few here today, two in the first half. And now one in the second. There's a little bit there between Mabry and Lennon. Neil Lennon's certainly not too happy. Matt and Neil's certainly not too happy in that technical area either. And they're both normally very calm as well. Joe Hamill. Did Petrov snap again his heels. Back from Nielsen to Webster. Kirk screens it well from Mialbi. Then runs into the Celtic defender. He's still going, Andy Kirk. Finally, it's Baldi who takes charge. No messing about there from Bobo Baldi. The real Celtic take a long time to deal with that situation, Andy Kirk. Another long throw from Robbie Nielsen. Nielsen flings it some distance. David Marshall was some distance off his line to take care of it. Craig Gordon having to watch every back pass because of a pretty uneven playing surface. Free kick there, given it against Mark De Vries. Yeah, just a lot of nudge there from the heart striker. Tiredness a factor now because these two have given it a laldi for the first 80 minutes or so. That's a good turn from Craig Beatty. Fires it in for Henrik Larsson, played away by Robbie Nielsen. Jamie Smith waited for it to drop, couldn't get a good enough touch. Hartley up to Kirk. Hamill. Composed on the ball. Gets away from Petrov. And it's that man, Neil Lennon, who's back to regain possession for Celtic. Then it's lost again. Then it's won again. Varga has it. A tired pass, though. I think intended for BT. Those last couple of passes are all a combination of tiredness in the pitch again. But any mistake. And either penalty box now could cost one of the two teams two points. 83 minutes on the clock. Scott Severin. Robbie Nielsen claims he was taken out off the ball. I think Kenny Clark put advantage there. De Vries loses possession. Now Lennon. Fouled by. Severin. Hearts are going to make that change now. It's going to be Andy Kirk off. It's going to be Graham Weir on. I think that's quite a wise move from uh, Tig Levine again. Graham Weir, fresh legs, last seven, eight minutes of the game. I'm sure Hearts will be trying to make sure the youngster pick gets on to the end of the long ball. The flick on is from McKenna and De Vries. Hasn't quite managed to recapture Graham Weir, the explosive impact he had last season with those two late goals in the amazing 4 all Edinburgh derby. But he'll hope to have a late say in this one. Nielsen's header away, Baldi. Tunnel Arsenal, Robert Pires has got the second, Patrick Vieira scored the first. Hearts heading for a title clincher at White Hart Lane. Hearts hope they're about to turn a draw into a win with a set piece here. Yeah, good play from Mark De Vries. Strong again. Goes to ground a little bit easier there, but uh, Kenny Clark even had to be a free. Joe Hamill over the ball. Paul Hartley as well. Celtic's set-piece marking has been less than impressive in this match at times.
Hartley's effort almost caught out David Marshall. It was a great try. It's a good shot from Paul Hartley. He knows he's out of what he's doing. Gets it round the wall. It's on target. It's straight in at the corner. But young David Marshall again, good agility. Gets over, gets both hands to the ball. Make sure there's no danger it's slipping in. Inside the last five minutes, Hartley's corner. Petrov clears. And Robbie Nielsen will come across to give this the long throw treatment. De Vries and McKenna, the obvious targets. Webster is in the box as well. In fact, Webster, the target for Nielsen, played in by Hartley. Varga gets it away. Back it comes from Robbie Nielsen. Out comes David Marshall. The ball runs loose. Just too high from Scott Severin. He's unlucky, Scott Severin. This is a hard one for the goalkeeper to deal with. He probably shouldn't come for it. Too many bodies there. Can't get a clean punch on it. But look at the Celtic defenders round about Scott Severin. Also two in the line, trying to make sure they don't lose this important second goal. Desperate to, to hold on to the point they have. Just can't get it on target, Scott Seven. At the moment, two minutes to be added, so five and a half away from the final whistle. Miller's pass to Agat. Presley in the way. Lennon. Back from Smith. Craig Beatty. Liam Miller, good challenge, Robbie Nielsen. Graham Weir, the substitutes. Mialby's interception. Foul given against Nielsen for his challenge in Miller. Baldi and Varga forward for this alongside Larson and Beatty. Neil Lennon, Henrik Larson. Jamie Smith sets himself up for the shot and then slices it wide. Good play from Jamie Smith, coming off the left-hand side, works this one on his right foot, good play from Larson as well, holding the ball up. Just a little dummy there, under a lot of pressure, lots of bodies in front of him, but just can't again get it on target. Just over two minutes left of the 90. Stan Varga. Up goes Alan Mabry. Foul against Scott Severin. One of the match, Sandy? Well, there's quite a few contenders today, Rob. Lots of good performances out in the field of play. But that young man who scored the opening goal for Celtic, Aidan McGeady, I thought for 70 minutes he was outstanding. And you know how I love to see young Scottish players coming through. He can try to play for Ireland if he likes, but for me, he's Scottish. And he's, today is my Bank of Scotland man of the match. He's going to get a visit from you by the sounds of it as well. <laughs> he doesn't want that. <laughs> so if you voted for Aidan McGeady as man of the match, you could be a winner. Stay tuned. We're just about in the 90th minute. Two to be added. It's been engrossing stuff at Tyne Castle. 1-0, are we to have a winner? Good play from Paul Hartley. Mabry. Severin's cross, chested down by Petrov. Scott Severin had a chance to play that one earlier, left foot, but wouldn't play it. The Celtic are the end of a team are happy with a draw, Sandy? Yeah, at that, that, this moment in time, if anyone's going to score, you would expect it to be Hearts. And having been caught out in midweek, pushing on for a winner yeah. against Aberdeen, you would imagine they're not going to get caught again. Yeah, well, you can see the, how hard Martin O'Neill still working with these players, trying to get every edge of, of energy out of them. There's Martin O'Neill looking a bit angry there, Chick, with an angry words. In fact, Chick, Chick's, Chick's gone down the tunnel, so we'll maybe find out about that one later. But there seemed to be a little bit of verbals there between Martin O'Neill and uh, Craig Levine. If it was just as Chick was going down the tunnel, maybe it was his fault. <laughs> <laughs> Chick probably getting in the road. But uh, I don't think it'd be anything serious. Both managers want to win the game. They've managed to get everything from their players today. 
Taylor Mason, a great season at Hearts, third in the league, and fighting hard to win this game. The announcement goes out over the PA that we're inside the last two minutes of the march, two minutes of stoppage time. That's played in by Mark de Vries and away by Bobo Baldi. It has been a terrific atmosphere here this afternoon, a great advertisement for football at Tynecastle. It's a shame it seems to be coming to an end here. De Vries with the shot! Saved by David Marshall, he had to react very quickly to that snapshot. This is a tremendous save, David Marshall doesn't expect the shot, doesn't see it to the last minute, it's slow, it's hard, it's right in the corner. And again, great reflexes from that young man. Nielsen's throw, Kevin McKenna's there, so is Mialpi. Paul Hartley's shot blocked by Lennon. Celtic trying desperately to hold out against unrelenting pressure from Hearts. Craig Beatty just looks to keep the ball, does well. It's Jamie Smith. It's given away. It's played into Scott Severin's hands. Although his pass was a tired one to Paul Hartley. Hearts need it forward. Nobody hits it beyond Graham Weir. And Jamie Smith wasn't too bothered about where that went. Clever pass from Miller to Beatty. Smith. Can Celtic win it? Larson trying to get turned. Took three Hearts defenders to keep him out. Free kick, it's Hearts free kick, it's full time. 1 1, it's finished at Tyne Castle. Aidan McGeady, the 18 year old, gave Hearts, gave Celtic a first half lead with his first goal in his first sample of top team football at Celtic. But back came Hearts with so much desire, so much hunger. And some stink with a player like you, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you say that, I could say it was a lucky strike as well, really. <laughs> First time it's happened in a while. Yeah, I wish I had a few lucky strikes like that. Mm. Eden, we've been, I think the nation's been debating over the last uh, 48 hours about what country you, you want to play for and what country you're available to play for. Mm. Just paint a little bit of the background for me. I know we talked to, I talked to you through the week and you've told me about the school boy situation. Yeah. T tell me how it all evolved. You're, you're born in Scotland. I was born, born in Glasgow, but uh, I decided to play for Ireland because my, my grandparents are Irish and they came in first, really. And I'm just I'm happy with Ireland just now, really. Yeah, so I can't do anything to persuade you to no, turn your future to Scotland. I mean, that's you know, you obviously you've done nothing at this stage that, that no. stops you playing for Scotland. It's just out of your own choice. No, it's just I'm choosing to play for Ireland, really. No, I think that probably ends that conversation, but I think you can expect lots of Highland Toffee and bottles of iron brew and people, Scottish fans try to persuade you to play. You, you always want to establish yourself in this, in this Celtic first team for the rest of the season. Well, hopefully a bit it might take longer, but uh, I just established myself in the team, really. There's a place going in midfield when Liam Miller leaves, obviously. Uh, I don't know don't know about that, really. I'll just try and, try and keep playing keep playing the way I'm playing, and then uh, maybe get another chance throughout the season. I'm sure you've already done tremendous points today. Bottle of champagne, man of the match, the match gone. Well done, my friend. Yeah, Cheers. Thanks. Well done. Thanks, Ed. I'm glad we got out of that before the United Nations were called in. This is what really counts this afternoon. Celtic and Hearts share the spoils, a point each. Celtic clear and worthy winners of the SPL Hearts, cementing their place in third. They will.